Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Martha's Vineyard. If you haven't seen the show before, uh, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. You've heard me say this before, biggest firm outside of Boston, and th there are 70 of us, and as a result, everybody gets to do what they like. I like elder law, so that's all I do. This show, as you know, is not about elder law. It's really about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations um, at the Senior Center, you know that I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're living in Martha's Vineyard, you don't want to be buried, like in Nantucket especially, but you don't want to be buried like in Seattle or San Diego. Or, you want to be buried here. So the question then is, who are the people you need to know what are the programs you need to know about uh, if you want to stay here? And that's the reason why I got this great co-host, Sandy Cordolby, grew up on William Street in, uh, in uh, Vineyard Haven, and has been here forever and just seems to know everybody so that she keeps in finding, as you know, these great guests that, that we get to talk to. Uh, and recently found this guy, this wonderful guy. A minute ago. A minute ago. No, like last <laughs> week and said, this is a really interesting guy. We had to talk to him. Named Alex Elvin who works at the Martha's Vineyard Commission, and thank you for, and actually said he'd be willing to come on our show, like sight unseen. This he was is our great. best friend just because of that. This is just great. So first of all, thank you very much for doing this. Sure, right, We pleasure. really appreciate it. So before we start talking about your project, which I think is really fascinating, just tell us how you ended up here. That's always an interesting question, and everybody asks from Mar in Martha's Vineyard, so where are you from yeah. really, you know, and <coughs> how did you get here? And where do you uh, want to be buried? And where do you want to be buried? <laughs> Apparently, that's the topic today. We, where have, you a, want to be we buried. have a place for you here. <laughs> really? A lot okay. of people end up ending up here, right? So. Um, oh, so I haven't really gotten that far in my life planning. Yeah. Um, All right. But, um, you may need a lawyer, but we'll talk about that after yeah, the show. Yeah, okay. right? right. We'll talk. Um, so I grew up in Western Mass, yeah. uh, Berkshires. Which town? Williamstown. Oh, Williamstown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Place. Um, kind of a seasonal community also. And uh, came here in 2014 to work at the Vineyard Gazette. Um, so I was a reporter there for uh, three years. Nice. And then I moved off uh, for a year, I lived in Somerville, uh, doing some freelance work, and then moved back here um, this month, September, to uh, take a job at the MB Commission. Everybody comes back. Everybody comes, yeah. once, once you've, right, once you've been to the Shark Beach and all these things, <laughs> I always, I didn't realize that you had a kind of a pre prior life oh, yeah. before you came back yeah. doing this stuff. Um, I think the connections you make here really last. Yeah. That's, yeah. and, and once you've been here, then you realize it's special. Something that people who grew up here sometimes forget. Yeah, you know, it's when you move away, you really realize how special it is. Right, mm -hmm. right. So tell, tell us about the project. This is just a fascinating thing. What, what, are, you, yeah. what are you doing? Um, so the commission is working with Healthy Aging Martha's Vineyard and MB Community Services and also other service providers on the island to uh, try to collect data about elders, uh, el services for elders on the vineyard. Um, so we're working with about 26, 27 service providers uh, trying to get a handle on uh, to what degree their services are being used by uh, elders in the community. Also um, looking at funding sources and budgets and as far as I know this is the first major attempt to try to quantify um, those aspects of elder services on the vineyard. Um, this started actually last year with the MBC's uh, uh, special projects planner Dan Doyle. Um, they kind of got things going. I took over in February uh, on a freelance basis, um, then picked it up again a couple months ago uh, for this new phase of the project, which is trying to refine the data and get it to a point where we can really make some uh, good, solid conclusions. And, and so, once again, we, it, it was just a fascinating thing, right? Did anybody know about this? Like, well, of course, a lot of, some people did, but I didn't, so. so when you're in, when you're doing this, are you are you basing this on? Has anyone else done something like this, like in another place? That so that you're kind of using this as the, this is how we're going to develop the study, or are you really starting from scratch here, or really were you starting from scratch? Um, starting mostly from scratch. Um, there have been other studies on the vineyard, uh, looking at the elder population. Uh, the UMass Rural Scholars Program has done several um, oh, yeah. in recent years, um, including a look at uh, the future needs of the elder community. Um, and uh, Healthy Aging Martha's Vineyard did an island-wide survey in 2016, kind of looking at the need for transportation, housing, and other um, issues. And uh, the hospital recently did a, a community needs assessment. Um, there's a new group on the island, the Island Disability Coalition, which has also completed a needs assessment for disabled people on the vineyard. 
Um, so there have been um, sort of scattered efforts in recent years to look at this issue or issues that relate to elder services on the vineyard. Um, so we're kind of building on those, but all of them really point to an urgency uh, to really look at what's being offered now and how to improve that in the future because um, it's pretty clear that the number of elders on the vineyard will grow significantly in the next 20 or so years. Um, so we really want to prepare for that. And, and can you give us like some examples of some of the entities that you've talked to already and kind of how, how you, you're starting from scratch. So how did you figure out a methodology? What is the methodology? How do you? Right, so we kind at? of had to create a methodology. Yeah. Um, and there have been some starts and stops, but we basically just started by compiling a list of uh, senior service providers on, on the vineyard. Um, a lot of it just came from groups you already, everyone knows of, like Healthy Aging, the hospital, um, Center for Living. Um, but then also relying on the, the First Stop MV um, website, which is an information referral site that lists services for people of all, all ages on the vineyard. Um, so, and also looking at some of the previous um, studies that have been done to just get a good list of providers. And then a big challenge was actually um, categorizing the services in a way that you can compare the services from group to group. Because, for example. Yeah, so like one, uh, like the YMCA for instance might call what they do uh, fitness programs, but another group that offers um, yoga or Tai Chi might call that recreation. So trying to sort of redefine these categories in a way that we can compare them. Um, so we actually ended up on the first pass identifying about 110 different services on the vineyard, mm -hmm. um, getting kind of granular. Um, and then we realized that that's not really, you know, practical for what we're doing. So we more recently uh, whittled it down to about 26 categories that are broader and allow us to uh, compare those from group to group. And, and by the way, when you see, I'm going back to your, your, the YMCA example, so are you looking at um, not just services that are provided exclusively to the elderly, but rather services like fitness, for example, yeah. that a number of people use, but some of the folks are gonna be elderly, yeah. so that includes yeah. the elderly. That's a good question. Wow, so that's a Well, so um, we're focusing on elder per services specifically for elders. Um, but also including some that tend to be used by elders. The YMCA actually has its own Healthy Agers program um, that does focus specifically on elders. So the data for the YMCA in this report is just the Healthy Agers program. In some cases, it's hard to pull out just the, the, the elders that are using a specific service. And like Featherstone, I think they're part of, a, part of your study and yeah. they have specific programs for elders along with the general community, right? Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of sort of cross-pollination yeah, going on. Yeah. So Featherstone works with um, Victoria over at the Anchors, mm -hmm. um, Edgar Town Council on Aging, um, on a memory support group. Yeah. 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 Um, and so one thing I'm really learning from this project is the, just the degree to which all these services are connected. Um, you might think of it as, you know, uh, hospitals doing their thing, um, Featherstone's doing their thing. But if you really get into it, it's, it's, it's more of a network. Right, and a set of people, because you just, you just said it, right? She's working with, not with, the, she's working with Victoria at the end, right? Because right? they're, they're a set of players th throughout all these organizations that have got really an interest in kind of elder issues. Right, right? yeah, and there, there are some efforts for, for the directors of these groups to you know, collaborate, um, but a lot of it just happens organically. So we're trying to really shed light um, on the way things happen um, and try to find areas where we might be able to improve those relationships. I think that from the presentation that I went to last week, what was, as I was sitting there listening, it was just amazing to me, all the different areas, and, and that's my job, is to connect people with all the services on the island. Don't tell me there were people there you didn't know, come on. No, there weren't people there that yeah. I didn't know, but, but what I was overwhelmed by, and I think is really great about this project, I'm so excited about it, is is that Alex gets this like sort of bird's eye view. He gets to sit up in the tree and look down, in, in, at least this is how I created it in my mind, um, and just see all of the different people and, and where they are intermingled, but also where the benefits of them improving their intermingling capabilities um, might work, you know, and bringing different groups together. 
and that was part of what we talked about that day too yeah. is is how do we bring the different groups together that are all serving the elder population that will learn from one another yeah. and and I think um, that was really exciting part of the presentation that I went to is wow the, we could sort of and we need to our elders are growing in a population of, of elder needing elder care in, in amazing speed and I think that um, we need to get really better at working together with all of the different um, agencies within our community to meet that need and I'm hopeful that this project is going to show some of that. Yeah and some of these groups as I said do get together already but it's yeah. kind of random um, like the NBC recently held a, a meeting just sort of a gathering of um, actually people associated with transportation services on the mm -hmm. vineyard to look at how to provide off-island transportation for elders. And so we, we had several of the Council on Aging directors, as well as the VTA. And I bet the Center for Living was there. Center for Living, yeah. Trying to figure that out. Uh, healthy Aging was there. So that those kind of things sort of bring people to the table. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a good opportunity to really get everyone sort of looking at the same information and thinking about it together. And learning things. I learned things in your presentation that I didn't know. And, and again, my job is to connect people with all the services on the island that they could need. And I learned things in your presentation that I didn't know. So I think that um, there's a lot more out there that even those of us that work in it every day um, will learn from this project. Hopefully. And one of the fun things about this show is we're going to hold the broadcasting of this show until you do a big presentation, which I know I know is going to be coming. So that right. we, so that anything that you say here is, by the time this gets showed, it will will be public knowledge. So, right. So can you just yeah. kind of talk? Can, can you give a little kind of a because this would be a good opportunity for folks who aren't going to be at that presentation. Yeah. To kind of get a sense of what you're looking at. Sure. Right? Um, so yeah, this the the data we have so far is really um, preliminary. So by the time we're done, the data might change a little bit. Sure. Um, but basically, we have a pretty good understanding of what's available and where we're headed. Um, and the final goal is to uh, present what we find to the town boards at public meetings um, and really try to get the towns more on board in addressing these issues. Um, so I guess the project kind of uh, breaks into two parts. Uh, we've, we have the data itself, which is all going into a database, um, which is searchable by organization, service type, uh, funding, source, in various fields. Um, we're basically asking um, providers to work with us to plug in numbers for number of people who uh, use this service in, say, FY 20, uh, 2018, um, what your funding sources are, uh, your annual budget, uh, target population, um, your organizational budget, uh, the num total number of people served by your organization, um, and then any like additional comments you have. Um, this is all going into the database, and the database itself will be available to the public on the NBC website. So there's the kind of um, numbers side of it, but then also uh, we're working on a report that's more of a narrative um, approach. Mm -hmm. So along with collecting data, we also spoke with um, a number of uh, service directors to just get a sense of what they see as the big issues uh, that they're facing. Um, and uh, some things quickly rose to the top, like housing. Um, that's a huge issue that really connects to everything on the vineyard. Um, for elders specifically, um, you know, some problems that affect the whole island might affect elders even more. Um, for instance, the, uh, the islands, towns, and houses are pretty widely dispersed, so um, mobility becomes an issue for elders who stop driving and might not be able to mm. like, walk to the nearest bus stop. Um, also, if, if an elder family or an elder um, wants to downsize or move into a, a new house closer to town, that's not an easy option. Um, they either will have trouble. It's not a cheap option. Right, yeah. Right. A lot of it comes down to money. Um, and then housing, uh, the difficulty in being able to move where you want to move might increase issues surrounding isolation. Um, so elders kind of stranded at their homes. Um, and that's where groups like Vineyard Village at Home comes in, which can provide transportation from their house to an appointment or to other events. So housing, uh, isolation, two connected issues. Um, some other 
uh, things that have come up. A lot of groups have mentioned uh, the difficulty in finding year-round uh, staff members, um, trained nurses that can be there, you know, all the time. Uh, that's also somewhat related to housing because uh, there's a lack of employee housing on the vineyard. Um, also nurses, many nurses tend to, um, you know, in the summer especially, work for, you know, private clients rather than for a nonprofit or an institution because the pay is just better. Um, of the nurses' aides. Nurses' aides. Mostly, yeah, yeah. the nurses' aides. Uh, definitely, that's a big issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so a lot of, like, interconnected things going on. Um, I find it interesting that, so the housing, what we're stumbling upon here is, is housing is not only an issue for our elders, but it's sort of a, also a secondary issue for our elders because we can't get them the help that they need because even the younger population that would be providing that help can't find housing. Right. So it keeps coming back to housing. Yeah. And not only uh, housing for elders and for staff members. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So one of our yeah. recommendations is to um, uh, encourage organizations that might not consider themselves to be elder services like housing organizations um, to play a bigger role in the planning process because um, housing just by default, Im improving that will improve services. For so many, so many places, yeah. And so you've got to, you've got, so does, does, the re, does the report, at this point, are you, are you actually getting to that kind of recommendations yeah. level? Um, okay. So we have uh, uh, sort of draft recommendations. One thing we were able to do is to look at the sort of redundancy of um, services. We can probably throw this chart up there. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, as I yeah. said, we got this great producer. So whatever you say, okay. you, you're usually going to pop up these charts. All right, right. right. magic. So, so that's, there kind it is. Of, that's kind of fun. That's Carl right. is magical. That's okay. right. Um, so we, we sort of looked at each category of service and looked at how many providers are providing that service. Um, so based on that and also our conversations with the directors, we, we identified some likely areas of need, um, and I can find that here. Obviously housing is one. Um, also financial support, groups that provide financial support to families, um, there aren't that many doing that. So that kind of came out as a pretty significant need. Financial support to pay for care, pay for food, pay for um, transportation. Pay for anything. Anything. Okay. Yeah, especially like um, medical needs. Yep. Um, there are some groups that are doing that, actually providing you know, money to a family or to an elder. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's a, uh, will likely end up being a key need that mm -hmm. we um, identify. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Uh, substance use disorder services. There are some groups doing a great job on that already, but connecting elders to those services, um, making sure that, um, you know, people know those are there. Um, and, and once again, I think that, that's a great, because it's such a real challenge, because it doesn't automatically click for a lot of folks that that's a senior issue. Right. Right, that's, that's thought of as, as a much younger, as a younger people. Yeah, issue. that affects Not, everyone, right. yeah. Um, also hom homelessness, um, people don't often think of the vineyard as, as having a homeless population, but it does, and, um, the Dukes County Associate Commissioner for the Homeless uh, um, has been working with the community in the last couple of years, and she's identified the population over 55 as among the most affected by homelessness. Really? Housing yeah. insecurity, yeah. Um, people living in their cars or in, in sheds. Um, so that's a significant issue. And they're like visible. I mean, that's, that's the thing. You, you know, you, it's important to bring it to the fore that that exists. Yes. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. People kind of look the other way. And it might not be exactly what you think of when you think of homeless um, people, like in a city. Um, it, here, homelessness is really a housing issue more than anything. The availability of housing, and people are just really having to be like resourceful, and ending up in you know substandard um, shelters. And and I'm curious. Do you do you are you, are you do you also deal or address of the role of Martha's Vineyard Community Services or the role of some of these players and, and the kind of whether some of these the roles should really be expanding or how, yeah how does that work right um, if, if one of the issues is this disparity of services which I know we were talking before and I, you know I was I was saying it's one of the issues when I always talk to Sandy that's why I keep pointing people to Sandy that that it, you're a senior and there are these various services but like how do you you know you, 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 as opposed to going through the phone book and asking each person, what do you do, right? Uh, you know, how do you really kind of figure out 
like a plan and then figure out how to plug stuff in. That's just tough. Yeah. It's just tough. Yeah, and like community services is doing so much already. Um, everyone's like doing really incredible work, but there probably are ways where you can consolidate some of this work or um, improve the flow of referrals, um, improve communications in general with the public. To take the um, as associate commissioner for the homeless as one example, um, it's possible that funding for that position might run out soon. So uh, we're recommending that you know, funding be pursued to keep that going uh, through another group on the island that could sort of manage that position. Um, so there are ways, I think, that you can tighten the ship a little bit. Uh, so redirect yeah. resources to places, yeah. So do you, and do you think it would, as a planner, do you think it would be possible to actually, once you figure that out, come up with kind of a global budget regarding what that, what those, I want to say administrative, the t what the total should be, you right. know, so that people can start, because I know so often we're trapped in the grant cycle, right? We're trapped in, the, oh, money's about to run up for them, so what are we going to go run around and do, you know, uh, is, and I, I think, like, if people knew the total, right, here's what you need, right? And then you start kind of figure. Then maybe you can start figuring it out from there. Yeah. You know, because it, it's otherwise it's very hard. Because even right. for the for the towns, right? And 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 kind of what's the role of the commission in all that? You know, what do you think yeah. the commission do? Because that's a, a unique service. The commission's yeah, unique definitely. to Martha's Vineyard. So one thing we're hoping is that this sort of serves as a starting point to really look at funding um, from a, a quantitative. You know, have some baseline numbers that we can really start with. The commission uh, sees itself in this regard as more of a, a supportive position um, as sort of staff that's providing uh, this resource to the community on behalf of healthy aging and community services. Uh, the commission also does grant writing, um, so that's something we'll be, you know, looking into, uh, researching grants. So there's a few different ways the commission is involved in this. Obviously, a lot of this does just come down to money, the availability of, of funding. So that is something we'll definitely be looking at. And, and are there places, and I, I, or is this really beyond kind of the scope of what you were doing, that you found that, are, that have kind of figured this out or that are really doing this better? Because I think that's one of, the, right. one of the things that I always find myself talking about in Martha's Vineyard is that always, people are always ahead of the curve here. People are typically, yeah. way, you know, in, and in terms of these elder services, uh, it, it Compared to every place else where I work, there's really a, a unique amount of integration here and cooperation, yeah. I, which I kind of attribute to the fact that it's the island and, right. and there are a set of places, and it's not huge, and people kind of know each other. Yeah. But I was just wondering, given that, are there places that are really doing it better? Yeah. Or, do you, or, or is, is that a part of what you're doing, or is that really beyond um, the scope? We will be looking at that. I think. Um, obviously, the vineyard isn't the only place that's facing a growing elder population. Uh, the whole country, um, actually, by the year twenty. Two baby boomers. Uh, baby boomers. I'm I'm facing it. I'm turning yeah. seventy in three months. This is the this is of great interest. To me. <laughs> I'm not almost You're a statistic. there. statistic. I'm there. I'm I'm in those. <laughs> I could be statistic. in those numbers. Yeah. Right? By, by twenty thirty, actually, all the baby boomers will be above retirement age. Um, and on the vineyard, that's a big chunk of the population. That's a big chunk. Yeah. I think what we have working for us is that people here, to a large degree, already know each other, know what, he, know what they're doing. Um, and people here really care about the community. Uh, so there is definitely the, the will to, to move this kind of thing forward. Um, we'd want to look at other uh, seasonal communities, especially Nantucket, um, Eric parts of the Cape, Maybe even um, mountain areas like in Utah, where there is like a really seasonal economy, um, to see if they're doing things that we could, you know, learn from. Mm -hmm. Right, because I guess that's the challenge to see if there's somebody that's. You know, I keep thinking of folks in Florida, which has been old for so long, right? That, <laughs> <laughs> right, that, that you didn't that, just say that. That maybe, that maybe that maybe they've kind of like figured some of this stuff. Or Arizona, you know, you just think of these set of places where 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 even when there weren't that many seniors, there were a lot of seniors, yeah. right? Just kind of, you no, know, honestly. Yeah. But but just to try to figure it out, you know, and because I know it, it, when you talk about what, what we often refer to here as simply the other island, you know, the other island is, is in many ways looking to Martha's Vineyard for a lot of stuff. I know that they're they're looking to the. Center for Living as kind of a model, this this kind of 
wonderful public-private partnership for, for providing a set of services, yeah. especially to folks who've got some memory issues and to their, and to their caregivers. Right. But you, you, once, it's always that question of kind of what are the models? Because it isn't, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit squarely into the traditional town human services budget, right? You've got the county, but is the county have? It's a very. Does the county have a role? Kind of. How does that work? Or, or is it really a role for, a, for, because there is a, so much nonprofit interest here for the, non, the nonprofit community to play to try to figure out how to play yeah. that hole. Yeah, it never hurts to to work together with other communities, and it'll be interesting to see um, how communities respond to the growing elder population once that really starts to hit. Um, we'll see some changes. Um, but it, it'll help communities to really get ahead of the curve, which is what we're trying to do here. I think it'll save money in the long run mm -hmm. and also you know, help more elders um, maintain their quality of life. And now from this presentation going forward, does, it, does this kind of end where the Martha's Vineyard Commission is involved or is, or is there more that will continue to happen regarding this? Yeah, well, we're hoping that this kind of creates a, a new standard um, for towns and organizations to really consider the value of data more carefully. Um, we believe that data should really be the starting point for future planning. Um, so we're hoping that... We can't use, just use our anecdotal system? No, I'm kind of bummed about that. Frank and Mary and their buddies, no. <laughs> that does, that goes can't make it all up. Yeah. In the absence of data, that's what happens. Yeah. Right? It's like, I, I know, think, all, I know a both. guy that... Right? Yeah. The stories, yeah. Yeah, but we're hoping that that just really encourages groups to keep better data you know, going forward. Um, and the database that we have is designed so that it can be updated on a regular basis. So that's something we plan to do. That's really interesting. Yeah. That's really interesting with the notion that, among other things, one of the gifts that you can be giving to these, all of these organizations is to have everybody agreeing that from here on, mm -hmm. if we're really gonna figure this out, this is what we need to be knowing. Right. Because if you can, you know, if you like, it's like exactly. the old Bill Gates, like if you can quantify it, you can fix it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of those examples where I think if you can quantify it, you really can make a big difference. Um, and getting this uh, um, project to the point where it's really useful in terms of the data has involved a lot of patience on everyone's part um, and a lot of cooperation. And that's an ongoing process itself. Um, there are layers of data. And it takes some time to like get your head around what we're actually looking for. It took some time for us to really, you know, zero in on what our goals were. Um, so in that sense, this is an ongoing process. How long has it been going on? How long have you been working on that? Um, I came onto the project in February this year, but it had already been started um, sometime last um, fall or winter. Wow, yeah. it's still relatively compressed, right? Yeah. Like, to like get a year by the time you're ready for your presentation. Um, yeah, about, I mean, there was a sort of hiatus in between um, when I started working on it and then picked it up again. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're hoping to go to the towns uh, this fall in October to uh, present the final results. Awesome. Wow. And so are you going to, are you going to stay in the vineyard now? Or are you, are you shipping yeah. back to, you're I'm, not shipping back to Williamstown? Nope, no, the movers came <laughs> Oh, they did. <laughs> yeah. You're just, you're so. another, well, he's, he's on the young side of the statistics <laughs> chart, though. That's all good. That's all good. <laughs> well, listen. Well, well, thank you for finding. Yeah, Alex. I'm, I'm so excited about yeah, this. This is Alex's really good. Project. Thank you very much for doing this. And Thanks. as I say, once again, we're not going to say reveal anything about what you just said until after you've actually, you know, talked to the big time okay. players, right? <laughs> yeah. But we really appreciate it, and we may have you kind of come back to visit. Right? That'd be yeah. great. Because it, follow it, it, it up, yeah. But because sure. in terms of really kind of seeing how this, this this evolves in terms of having everybody really be able to see a coherent picture of the future. This is really a big deal. Yeah. This is really a big deal. Thank yeah. you so much for everything. Thanks for having me. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for watching. Thanks, thanks again, Sandy. And we'll see you again on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much.